Framing? Yes. Wait. Yes, we are we are live. Yes. Yep. Bye. Thank Go you. ahead, Bernie. Um, welcome to the Clean Energy Commission virtual meeting, January 26, 2022. I'm Bernie Pelletier, and this meeting is conducted as a virtual meeting, as you can tell. Members of the public may be viewing the meeting on West Hartford Community Interactive on Comcast channel number five, Frontier TV channel 6098, and on YouTube and on www.whctv.org. Members of the public also can provide comments on agenda items by calling at the scheduled date and time using the following access information. The call in number is 408-418-9388. And please supply the access code 2337-137-9185. And with that, we'll launch into our agenda. Welcome everyone. Um, we'll start off with a roll call of Commission members, um, and it's a small group. Actually, it just got bigger. Max is here. Um, so, Dave, Dave Mello, present. Max de Boisson, present. Joe Campanella, present. Catherine Davini, present. Bernie Pelletier, here. Um, Nicholas Natone, we can see your name. Thank you for putting that up, and we'll record that you attended this meeting. If you were looking for an alibi, you, you, you now have it. Um, may I have a motion to approve the uh, meeting minutes that Catherine put together from our December 15th, 2021 meeting? I motion to approve the minutes. Anyone opposed? Hearing, hearing none, we'll forge ahead. To, Catherine, I want to compliment you. I think the meeting minutes were accurate readable and actually <clears throat> made some sense of the word salad that we had going there in the last month of last year. Um, just to bring the, the group up to date, there were two takeaways uh, in those minutes. One um, was that we were going to approach the town council, actually the it used to be the planning facilities and planning um, subcommittee of the town council. It's now got sustainability in its name to make sure that they had that we the commission were <clears throat> represented on that commission and I think Catherine is now a standing agenda item so congratulations Catherine I think they were very pleased to have you um, join and the other thing we do have a vacancy on the, on the commission with the retirement of um, James Capella I, I think our instructions were it, any new member could not be a Democrat. It actually is a little bit more strict than that. It actually has to be a Republican because we have two levels on the commission. We have full commissioners and we have alternates. And apparently this party, minority party representation has to exist at both of those levels. <clears throat> um, before I knew that, I had reached out to Lee Gold who was the former Republican and now the Connecticut party um, and asked if, if he had any potential representatives. He put me in touch with Mark Merritt, who I think might join tonight, um, but he is, actually he did not know at that time what party he was. He could be the Connecticut party, he could be a Republican or he might be an independent. It's, it's, that, it's that fluid, so. And we are still, uh, Catherine, we, what should we do? We, we've reached out to the, the, the schools a number of times. This is maybe a third meeting and nobody has surfaced. Yes, I said, um, unfortunately, uh, I, because I keep having to send an internal West Hartford Schools email, uh, partly my fault that I, I've been giving very short notice to Allison Booth, the one Connard, um, student who voiced interest in coming to our commission meetings. Um, 
I think maybe we should resend a broadcast out, especially um, in light of some other things that we might get to later in the agenda, like the climate crisis resolution and and possibly um, you know kind of a, a refresh on our um, enabling legislation. Um, right. Great. Okay. Let, let's let's do that. Let's just send it out. And I it, I think it's just kind of lost in translation. Um, I can see Stephen Sack. You've joined. Welcome. Happy New Year. Um, yes. Thank you. You too. And it looks like Mark Merritt has joined as well. Welcome, Mark. Yes. Hello. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, that's that's quite all right. I don't know if you heard. I was. Trying to introduce the circumstances that brought you here. I was um, just indicated we we're reaching out for minority party representation, and it's a little bit more complicated than we thought. So we're, we're going to later in the agenda double back to, to all of that. <clears throat> so we have a couple old business items. Last last night, for folks that like to stay up late, with the uh, climate emergence, the climate crisis resolution was approved. Um, did anyone, Catherine, you watched the, the replay, any, any commissioners watch it? Any, any discussion? I know I, I was actually on the town council meeting last night, standing in for zoning. So I was, was there. I, I was actually confused. I was on the phone and they kept saying you, your name and Mary Faye in the same. In the same sentence, and I was trying to figure that one out. Uh, so maybe I'm on the zoning um, still, and so she was not able to make the meeting last night. She was off campaigning for state comptroller, so I filled in um, as a result of the application for the 920 Farmington Avenue um, project. Great, great. Well, did I read that correctly? They took out all the carbon pricing out of the uh, emergency climate action. That is that is correct. Um, it, Stephen, the, the whole thing was was substantially rewritten from the version that we saw by West Hartford's Corporation Council, um, and then uh, Matt and I um, embarked on a process working with the kids and making some final adjustments because it was a big surprise to them um, that the resolution they had been working on for so long had had been completely. Um, replaced with new language, um, but it, in the end, I think it's a it's a big step forward. Um, so I, I'm, and and in the end, they were very they were all spoke and were very supportive of the the new resolution as well. Although I, a lot of the comments that were made, I think were, um, you know, what what's really important is what happens after in the implementation phase. No, no, I, I I thought it was good that they they cleaned it up to where we. Kind of had suggestions and actually thinned it out even more from there. It seems like, you know, narrowed it down to like one page. Yeah. Did you read the the updated? I I, I mean, I I liked it. I I do understand that the kids wanted more more structure and timeline around it. Um, but like you said, some of the feedback we had given them, even um, me personally and and us as a commission, um, was against some of the stuff that was in their version. So. Um, what was it? What was a change of heart to change it? You know, from where Matt Hart took it to a different committee to try and push uh, it with all the other stuff. No, Matt Hart was um, was uh, still working with the kids version, and then um, I I think the the process was um, a little was new um, to the committee. Um, it, typically, resolutions don't. And, and I think people were a little bit confused about how that, just like we talked about, uh, about how that process worked. Um, typically resolutions are um, requested by council or council committees and, and drafted by, and this is something that I learned along with the kids um, and, and kind of late in the process, typically, you know, committees will draft resolution language or or ask corporation council to draft it. It typically doesn't come in um, fully baked from the outside with endorsements um, by organizations. Um, so they, I guess, the committee 
I don't know which one, requested to go back to that original process and, and Corporation Council uh, made significant changes. Nice. No, I, I was very happy that it got changed. Yep. Did you read the final language yet? Uh, I, I think I I think I did. I think I read something the other night uh, that the the one that they were bringing to the um, to the committee. So I think I did read. And then I was hoping that's one I read. It was a, one. It was down to one page, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Bernie, can you make that larger? I also posted it on the Sustainable West Hartford Facebook page um, in its entirety, um, but it's it's. Bernie, we can't really see it. It's oh, you can, you can. that's the biggest. That's <laughs> bigger I can do it. So, gotcha. It is. It is one page. Um, it's very succinct. I actually think it's very well written. Yep. Um, some some of the wordsmithing emergency versus crisis, I, and I think all almost everybody was of a mind. Yeah, it matters what we do with with this in hand. If you want to, if you want to increase it, you have to go to the left hand side. There should be a little. Uh, if you right click on the document, a little left hand column uh, comes up and you should see a magnifying glass. Okay, I'm gonna, I, I think I can zoom in. Maybe that'll do it. Yep. Is that, is that getting better? It's getting bigger. Yeah, getting bigger. Uh, getting bigger. Okay. But now we've lot now. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Can it be read by a human being? So. Yeah, Dallas Dodge primarily are, are, Head Corporation Council primarily drafted the language, and then Matt and I got a hold of it and and made a few significant changes to it to to try and bring back some of the key concerns of the the kids around, um, you know, ensuring that that climate change was used as a lens for future town council actions and decisions. Um, you know, putting in at least um, a mechanism for tracking. Some of the the final be it resolves, um, you know, we 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 put in a few key items that were missing from the the draft, so we beefed it up a little bit. Yeah. I think it's uh, you know I think we should all be pleased, um, you know, that it it's on the books. <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> <laughs> and what matters is is what we do, what we do. and that that was kind of our message to to the kids. And Bernie's been been saying it. Bernie and I I think have been saying it for a long time that. Again, uh, the the wording's not as important as as what we do with it. Right. You yeah, know, I, I I like this this version very much. That's good. Not sure. I'm not sure I can un I can stop sharing. Hold on. Stop sharing. No, now we're there. You go. <laughs> it pains me to share too much. So I th I think this is this is great and. Uh, now we can move on to doing things. And in that spirit, the next agenda item, I want to give a quick update on HeatSmart. Um, he, um, Mark and Nicholas, uh, I don't think you're familiar with it. It's a That's a community education and outreach campaign that promotes energy efficiency and um, efficient heating and cooling. So largely heat pumps, but the, the the lead of it, and the reason we got funding from Eversource is that we were promoting home energy solutions audits, which will just increase the efficiency of people's homes, insulation, and stuff like that. Um, been a long time coming. I, I believe tomorrow, I actually have a meeting with Matt Hart on a different topic, but all he has to do is in the docket sign, sign it, and then we're, we're official. Um, we, we have a great, team of volunteers, I'll just read them off. Ted Lowenthal, Deborah Rowe, who works for PACE, Christine Feely, who may join us this evening, um, Paul Swenke, Catherine, whether you like it or not, you're part of the team, um, Michael Leone, Celia Kozinski, and Joe Campanella. So that's, that's a wonderful uh, showing of community support. Uh, we're gonna start activities as soon as we can. Um, does this mean when Matt signs off, you'll get the website up and running? Yep. Yep. The, in fact, if you, any interest of time, anybody is in, just go to West um, Heat Smart Connecticut forward slash West Hartford, and you can see it. It's almost it's almost ready ready to roll. We have some great partners. We have North New England Smart Energy and Energy Efficient Solutions. They're our HES contractors. We have I Heart My Home, who is an energy consultant. 
who will work for free for um, residents. We have Dandelion Energy and King Energy. Those are geothermal installers. And we have Nutmeg, um, Link, and High Grade, who are air source heat pump um, partners. And, and to be clear there, they're not really selected contractors, they're education and outreach partners. So they're over, over the course of the year, we hope to have events where they tell people what heat pumps do and what they don't do. Um, and we have launched this campaign in Bethel all the way across the state, uh, just on the 18th. And we already have about a dozen people who have joined. And so far we're off to a good start and I hope to do better than that here. Um, I want to, there is. We've, we've already, um, you know, gotten sign off from the mayor. She's, she's approved quotes for the website and everything. So she's on board and, and thinks it's going to be a great initiative as well. I hope so. One of the things <clears throat> Eversource is providing a grant that will allow us to do mailings and print materials. It's under the, it's called the community partnership energy efficiency engagement initiative and uh it's sort of in quid pro quo they're going to give us some training i've got it on the agenda as february 2nd it's actually moved out to february 7th from one to three it'll be virtual um in in that there are going to be some some elements which are just going to be what we have to do to satisfy their requirements but there will be bona fide training on what a has audit is and so what their what their efficiency programs are so as we get closer, I'll, I'll send an invite out to all of you. And if I can figure out in that two hours, what would be worth your time to attend? Um, if you can make time, it might be worth your while. Yeah, I guess that, that was my question, Bernie. Does everyone on this committee attend and everyone on your Heat Smart team or who needs to attend that? And do you know if it's going to be during the day? It's going to be February 7th from 1 to 3. So right okay. after. 1 um, to 3. Okay, that would be good to put a placeholder on. Yep, and I'll actually I'll I'll do that right after the meeting. I'll send it out, Catherine. Have they, and have they, and just sorry to interrupt. Did have they announced it yet? I keep waiting for some publicity. So no, they they haven't. Um, there were ten programs that ten grants that they sent out, and the process is they send us an MOU, people sign it and send it back. Um, you can imagine with ten different communities. Some people haven't got back to them, and they wanted to do it all at once. So that's 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 the hold up. I don't know how long that's going to take. <laughs> so we're we're forging ahead. We've got what we need to to start up, and um, th they'll actually give us seed money to start. So that, that's good. Any any questions on that? This is. I'll just say one more quick thing about it. When we say the words, and actually, uh, I know St Stephen and I have talked about this quite a bit. When you say the words that West Hartford is going to become a net zero community by 2050, it's easy to say those words, but then you say we have 25,000 households, we have 1,200 businesses, we have a large municipal infrastructure, and you start to think of all those buildings, all those cars, all that stuff. It's a lot. And so campaigns like this, are the way we're going to start reaching out to the residential side. There's a companion program that where we can start to reach out to the business program, but I, I don't think we can run two of these at once. But maybe next year we can we can look at that. Bernie, have you looked at um, engaging the chamber so you can potentially do residential and commercial at the same time? We, no, I, not in West Hartford. But in Bethel, we just accomplished that this week. We actually have a kind of an ingenious program with, with the uh, Bethel program. They've got something called Bethel Bucks. And so as, as when the, I don't wanna dive into it, but when the HES audit is completed, the auditors will give us a $25 sort of community donation. What we're going to do is take $25, give it to, buy $25 of Bethel Bucks and give it to the homeowner. And so we sort of have this hopefully mutually beneficial circular, um, process going on and they and they'll they in turn their their stores and members will um 
that we sort of put up our posters and to the extent that we're printing stuff, we'll use their printers. So we're trying to make it as synergistic and I'm hoping we can do a lot of that here in, in West Hartford. So hey, Bernie, so I'm the treasurer of the Elma Business Association and my next door neighbor here is environment, what are they? Environmental Systems Corporation and they do energy audits on the commercial side. And so we had them, uh, one of their head guys give a presentation to the uh, business group about different programs that are out there. And mm -hmm. it, it went out very well. Um, uh, Steve, for... so Steve, that's awesome. That's the kind of thing that Joe has wanted to do and Joe has done. Like yep. years ago, he himself went to different local business associations, but he, uh, Joe, jump in here if you want. The business world was something that was so hard to crack, um, you know, just being an outsider and being a, a commission member. So yeah. I, I love that you as a as a businessman <laughs> and you're using your, you know, business friends and connections are getting an, a receptive audience there. Because I think Drew, what Joe was, Campanello is getting very uh, frustrated, you know, and even on the town front, us, us, um, the town tried to organize some pace um, workshops and information sessions and invite business members and, and no one would come. We even hand, you know, sent personal invitations to them through the community development department. How, how long ago was that? Uh, the pace stuff was, was years ago when we first joined the pace program, probably in 2012 or so, I'm going to say. Yeah, um, yeah. See, I think the programs are are, are, are much bigger today. So yeah. there's there's a lot more for commercial property owners out there yeah. today. Um, you know, within 20 minutes, you know, people were like, wow, you know, building owners and stuff. Yeah. Um, just at least just open their eyes up to things they can, to, you know, things that there, there are funds available to do. Yeah. Um, so, right. you know, there's no reason why I, we can't, I can have this guy go to the um, uh, Chamber of Commerce, you know, um, uh, the Park Road uh, Association, whatever else there's out there. Yeah. You know, he's right here in West Hartford, local company. They do a lot of big commercial stuff. I don't, I don't know if they do work for the town of West Hartford at all. Um, big building automation stuff. Yeah, we we use them at Webster Hill School again back in probably about 2012. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, and I know they're just. Uh, he just sent us an email that they're changing EV charging uh, setup. Right, Bernie? Did you see that? The new rules? I, I know that they're trying to get the utilities to put more of them in and making it easier to put them in, but that's as far as I know. Yeah. So I just, I, I can send you a little brief summary he sent us um, that just came out with the new new um, funds available to uh, supplement, like they'll they'll pay for I think you just pay you pay maybe half or, or whole of of uh, of the machine of the charging, but they you know EverSource pays for all of the electrical connections to it, and it's a hundred percent of the infrastructure, and then fifty percent of the unit itself. Okay, yeah. So it's it's it it they're throwing more and more money at it, where it it it, it kind of people look at it and go, oh, okay, all right. Now I need to, uh, you know, this is this is a smart thing for for me to do it as a business owner, building out property owner, whatever. Yes, Steve, if that's something you can you can kind of get going, um, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the programs on that side, and I know yep. a fair number of the EverSource people that are on the Small Business Energy Advantage sort of program side. But the, I think what Catherine said and what Joe encountered is we just had trouble. I, I I think I think they thought we were selling them snake oil, and it just didn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was it was easy because, you know, to the business association, the business guys bring it in just as, you know, Jack over there who who's like, the, I think he's their you know in house expert. You know, he, he wasn't as selling. He wasn't trying to sell anything. Just yeah. kind of lay out what the rules were. If you want more, give him a call. Um, you know. 20 minutes and and you just hit the right crowd you know the business guys it it you know they all seem to like it yeah. well to, to nicholas's point i would be it would be wonderful if you could broker a presentation by 
SNE or someone to, um, sorry, ESC it is, right? ESC yep. to, um, through the Chamber of Commerce um, or a similar presentation like you did to the other four or five uh, local business associations. And, and maybe um, Kristen Gorski, our economic development specialist can help um, you get it. I, I, you know, I can get contacts yeah. for all the rest of the associations and, and we can. Yeah. Kristen was on the, she, I think she was on the call. Um, Great. Yeah, she was on the call. Um, somebody from Chamber of Commerce was on it too. Awesome. Yeah, it was, it was yeah, that so call. Cool. You probably heard where we got Zoom bombed. You oh, did. You did? No way. It got a little, little. A little crazy. We were running it. Uh, one of the guys and I was running it and just opened up the door for everybody to come in. And it was a little out of hand for a few minutes till we could dump the person. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But, uh, but it was a great, it was a great, you know, 20 minutes, just quick presentation. Uh, but yeah, yeah, no problem with Kristen. If you, we want to do it to other associations, I mean, I don't think that why they wouldn't give you the floor. You know, we look at it as Elmwood, like here we're providing, you know, you're a member of this organization. Here we're providing you a service. Here's one of the things you may not know about. I'll shoot an email um, to you and to Kristen, just kind of uh, with the idea, and and hopefully maybe you guys can work together um, because she's more plugged into. I would, into also, I would also stress. Yeah, I would also stress I need the Chris Conway as well, the chamber. Mm -hmm. um, include him as well. Okay. It will be very helpful. Yeah, Jack from ESC, he's yeah, no problem to show up and give a speech. Yeah. And does it all the time. Yeah, I was impressed that, that uh, the audit is free on the Small Business Energy Association. Um, and um, so they'll come in and they'll say, here's a bunch of stuff you can do. And some, sometimes if you've got like a, a motor and you don't have a variable speed control on it, that you can you can cut your energy use tremendously. And it's, just from my walking around town, I look at a lot of the, especially the HVAC equipment that I can see on the out back or on the roof, and I say, that's about a million years old. You know, that we can, we can do better. So there's there's a lot of low hanging fruit both on the residential side and the uh, the business side. Yeah, most most property owners, I don't even think they even know about this stuff. Nope. So, Bernie, getting back to HeatSmart, though, um, small commercial will also be a focus of of that campaign as as well, right? But um, since our volunteer team hasn't met yet to kind of brainstorm or <laughs> identify what the campaign and the different events and components will be, um, we can we can start thinking about maybe a, a few commercial. Um, points in that campaign as well. Yeah, businesses that sort of operate out of a house are, are going to fit right into this. Um, I think and on the residential side, up one, four, four and under families in a, in a building are, are considered residential. I, Nicholas, were you trying to get a word in edgewise? I heard somebody trying to. No. OK. That was um, me at one point, Bernie. Okay. Well, nobody should be shy. We're a small group and we can. Robert's rules of order haven't worked here for a while. Um, Catherine, real, real quick, we, we had marked up the, uh, I forget what it is, page 21 of, of the plan, mm -hmm. what we're going to concentrate on. I, I just want to not like spend a minute, just pull it up. Pull, pull, it up. pull it up. Yes. Yep, please, yeah, if you could pull it up, that would be great. Let me see if I can. Boop. And if you if you can't, I just want to make sure we're focused on the same thing. And Stephen, maybe we're gonna have to add a business outreach if you can if you can pull that off, get us started on that. Sure. You guys see this? Is it tiny? Boop. Not too bad. I can make my screen. Better? That's perfect. Better? Okay. Oh, I should have flipped. Now this is going slowly. I should have flipped to the right slide first. Hold on. Okay. Uh, this. Oh, here we there go. We go. I scrolled right past it. Sorry. I marked up uh, right there. Which one is it? So this this is what we did in the last meeting, 
um, where we marked up right here. Yep. The next steps. These ones or these ones beyond. Uh, no, that, that one. Let's do that one right there. So. I just want to review that real quick. So regular updates that town council is not started. I think it's, I think you're, you're doing that. I think that one started now. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, I can't edit it while I'm sharing. I don't that's, think that's okay. Sorry. <laughs> or no, I just can't edit while I'm in. Uh, oh, there we are. We'll change that one. I'll if, you get, if you get I'll rid of the uh, ribbon at the top, it'll make it bigger for the rest of us. I'll just do it later. Yeah, that's, okay. that's so number two, I need to update to in progress. Right. And I think three is good. Uh, connection is four is in, in, is in process. Five, I think. Five is in process, actually. It's, it's not on the website, but I've, I've started a big, um, I've started the, the content. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big believer, having worked on a heat smart website, that a good website is really critical. Um, even though we've invited the youth, I think we're going to re-invite them so we can leave it green. Yep, yep. Social services is something we have we have to work on. Um, okay. Uh, I think are we going to do that as a, a specific focus of heat smart as well? Yep. To, okay. Yeah, we want to reach out to, to low middle income people. Anybody anybody needs energy assistance? See if we can't cut down their use as well as cut down their bill. Is it worth approaching um, social services or um, our um, Conrad, our um, community? Oh. Liaison from the uh, yeah, our energy guy. I think so. To be part of your team or see if he has interest in coming at least to the first meeting and seeing how he can plug in. Totally. Because there might be a role for them um, or advice. Yeah. And uh, Catherine, so for the rest of folks, there's uh, the uh, community action agency, I think it's called, is actually based in Hartford, but they have somebody stationed right in town hall uh, to help people with energy applications and hardship applications, that sort of stuff. I, in the COVID era, I don't know if he's there or, or, or not. Do you know? Is he back? I think he's back. Yeah, I think I saw him one day a few weeks ago. Very good. Okay. Very good. So this we might uh, also want to um, ask uh, Luan, um, who's the um, the grants manager for um, for a lot of uh, energy improvements for low-income housing in the town. Um, I don't know how Heat Smart might fit into those programs as well. I did not know that there was such a person. Um, what what group is that? Um, I, I'll connect with you after, and, and we'll get both of those names. Very good. OK. So that's and then Catherine, if you go to the next page, which is the 2022, just want to see there. I think we talked about a microgrid. I don't. Yeah. What? Um, I mean, how deep of an investigation do we have in mind there? No, Max. I, so it's a big it's a big issue to get a microgrid up and running. You have you have to have a sort of a feasibility study, and you got to get a uh, what, I forget what they call it a electrical line drawing and and uh, but I I guess and that's that's far deeper 
that I think any of us on this call can, can go, but I was hoping we could conceptualize something more by imitation. And specifically what I'm thinking of is the police station. If we were, if we were able to hook up some solar and, and a little bit of battery, um, we might be able to have some sort of microgrid. But I, 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 don't, I don't think we're gonna be able to really get that one going. Yeah, keep in mind, these are things that are on the table for beyond 2022. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Good point, Catherine, good point. <laughs> we don't have to do everything this year. Yeah. Um, but I like your, I, I mean, we've been down that road before um, when Ron Van Winkle was in the town um, and, and we were looking at um, uh, and the microgrid program at Deep first came out, we talked about potential locations, just generally areas of town that would be suitable, such as Elmwood or the center, especially um, the hub with the police station and town hall and everything. Um, and um, the the rules, especially a lot of the right of way issues and, um, you know, who would be the utility for the power, um, was were our our huge roadblocks um and at that time the the advice was um from a lot of people who were town of glastonbury and other people who were who really pushed hard to do a microgrid that if it, unless you really wanted one <laughs> you know so, someone had to want one really bad in order to, for the amount of effort that ha had went into it um the idea in West Hartford that was that we were interested not just in the public microgrid, but in a public private partnership that, you know, in a time of emergency would power more than just a police building. It might power, you know, a gas station, a bank, a food store, a, you know, a gym for shower or a hotel for shower facilities. So that takes these projects to another level of complication. Yeah. As you were talking, Catherine, the um, the new community center, this this I'll call it the St. Bridget's School. Mm -hmm. There's just not much around that, that 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 I there's not a gas station or anything, is there? It's just no. out there. But Bernie, I mean, to revisit your idea, I do like the idea of a conceptual drawing, and I, I hearken back to to when we met in Simsbury with Mark's model of um, the um, all the businesses and the high school kind of the boundary of what the where the microgrid would be and conceptually what could be on a microgrid and how it might switch on and off and i think the visual representation is something that max could draw <laughs> on a powerpoint slide <laughs> um you know using a, a google earth image and superimposing some um some diagrams like mark had and like that um what was it community microgrid yep. slide deck that you had um if we if we passed all that to max he might be able to generate and i'm talking just a slide that we could get in front of some counselors um to get them excited about the concept i that makes a lot of sense to me and that's just i think that's None of well, except for Dave Mello. Maybe I don't know if you're an electrical engineer or not, but I'm sure no electrical engineer. <clears throat> but I think we can conceive these things. Did someone say they're an electrical engineer? Yeah, Nicholas Matone here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so I work. I work for a utility consulting company. Um, so this this is all pretty in my wheelhouse. Nice. <laughs> you you just volunteered yourself to work with Max on a slide. <laughs> yeah, I can I can probably uh, lend a hand with that. <laughs> I think I would probably echo the sentiments though that a microgrid might not be uh, worth pursuing. It it may be easier to have dedicated generation or or storage facilities on on the specific uh, places that you want to have backup for. That's probably a much simpler approach. Do you, is that, 
kind of, I, I, I don't know whether you're in this industry, Nicholas, is, is that kind of the direction people are going now with all the emphasis on and incentives programs coming out for storage? They're kind of looking at more isolated facilities rather than microgrid applications? Um, I work more in the the larger transmission and generation space, um, so I'm not quite as up to speed on the distribution level and what what's the state of the art. Um, but in my opinion, I would I would probably lean more towards yeah individual storage solutions. It's going to be a lot easier to install and coordinate with EverSource compared to trying to set up a microgrid. It does sound more economical. I mean, for the public facilities, um, you know, that's straightforward. I feel like if there's a private facility like a gas station with a microgrid, well, you're in because you're in proximity to where the microgrid wants to be, but otherwise we'd have to sort of pick a winner, right? Who who gets the batteries? Uh, who gets the power? And so there may need to be a more creative arrangement made with that facility. Yeah, it may overall be more economical to do some kind of like grant program or something. You know, to determine who would get those facilities or a subsidy for those facilities. The just, other, oh, go ahead, Bernie. Well, I, just to throw into this conversation, <clears throat> it was just announced that there is, I think, a 500 megawatt storage initiative, half of it residential, half of it commercial. They're, and they're really their goal is resiliency. And so we might be able to play into that. So I think this is, a, this is a happy combination. We have an electrical engineer, we have a storage program, and we have a very capable artiste. The other things that comes to mind um, in terms of you know facilities that we would want to have online during an emergency. Um, I think it was this morning on the radio, um, I believe in Arizona, maybe they were talking about um, a city putting in basically a emergency resilience office sort of a command center for you know in their case usually extreme heat uh, but a place that would always be available and you know coordinate responses to climate emergencies and you know be available for people to come cool off if it's too hot or you know get bottled water or whatever oh like a shelter sorry i thought you meant like a command yes. operations center i, I mean cuz that you know, we do have in the police off, in the police department but it's not open to the yeah public. <laughs> it sounded like some combination of the two but not a shelter where people stay overnight but gotcha. a place that yeah um they didn't go into a lot of detail unfortunately and i haven't been able to find um the story online to figure it out great well I'll get a little bit of information on the on the storage program. I've been talking. Is it? I've I have been starting um, looking at those programs too, Bernie. I'm not an expert um, on what's rolling out either. The you EverSource has not been very forthcoming with information on any of their January start programs, be it electric vehicle charging or solar or um battery storage um you know uh i think maybe they're i i don't know i think that maybe they're a little behind and they're trying to catch up <laughs> yeah that's well, there's a lot going on there too and just as i s scoot down the page i'm just struck by we start the small business energy advantage program um i think we Stephen, if you're on board let's <laughs> let's let's do that um because that's that's what we need is somebody who can talk to the business community yeah i, I can i can uh arrange to bring somebody who who knows all the ins and outs I, i'm not the guy but i can bring i can 
I can bring in the people, you know, especially a commercial property owner, a business owner, uh, employee of a business right, right in town too, which is nice. All right. So Catherine, I think with, if we pull over, call it a, a storage discussion and, and the, the business advantage is something we'll try to get done in 2022. I think our, our plate is, is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not pulling them over yet. We'll pull them over when we update this plan. Yep. I just want to have a, a, a cheat sheet. That... Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see whether we do anything with this one or not. Don't be so cynical. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I'd like to do this one. Six. What, what is it? I'm looking at. Uh, oh, well, that's yeah. OK, never mind. Go ahead. Keep going. All right. Um, I'm going to move down to new business. Uh, discussion of commission organizational structure. Of, uh, so. I think it's Catherine. Am I overstating when I'm saying that we, the West Hartford Clean Energy Commission, have are not properly formed? Um, we are formed by resolution. I think all commissions are supposed to be formed by ordinance. Um, you and Bob Palmer are not meant to be members of this. You, we have to be uh, to be on a commission. You need to be a resident, an adult resident, a voter actually as, as i understand it so we have some you know a bit of a, a bit of a mess i don't i don't quite know how we we got here but we're, this is where we are we do have a vacancy which is james capella and i, I just wanted to throw out that for a, i guess a discussion we can go back and try to get ourselves reformed as a bona fide commission, which means Catherine, you you would become a community liaison. We'd probably go up to nine members, which is a more normal, you know, number of commissioners. We 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 shrunk the number because we had trouble meeting quorum. I think there's a lot more interest now, and so that would be my preference is to just see if we can't get that going at that point. Mark, I, I think. It's, we can't nominate you, or, but if we sent you through the town council, you know, people you could jump on. Um, Nicholas, if you're not careful, we could induct you as well. Um, but that's what I would like to do. I don't. Bernie, maybe we should take a vote. Um, I don't know how. Is this something we would vote on that the commission would like to? reinvent itself and have work with corporation council request that we are able to work with corporation council to to draft an ordinance i i would like to have a vote but let me let me put one other candidate into the mix mm -hmm. um, as, as you can see the way we're conducting this meeting we are not it's not like a town council meeting we are we we're we are bound by all the the foia requirements and all the minority party requirements a whole bunch of stuff that really i think doesn't serve our our purpose very well i think we're meant to do do work i think we're in some ways more like a task force so i think the other way we could go is just to become a task force a clean energy task force with a with a set goal of helping the town get to its uh implement the clean energy plan so I think that's, I think we have, we have to do what we can't stay where we are. We're going to get evicted from, from where we are. I think we could either go forward as a task force, which I, I think would give us more flexibility and might be easier to operate, or we can reconstitute ourselves as a commission. I don't necessarily think we have to make that decision tonight. No. Um, I, you know, I think, I think we should, uh, get some advice from corporation council and and think more about what it is we want to do and look like and let them tell us what we are because yeah. they're the experts um i also 
what I would like to throw out there in light of the resolution that was passed yesterday, um, whether this commission would like to think about kind of renaming ourselves or broadening our horizons uh, so that we're not the clean energy commission and i don't know what we would be but again i think this warrants some some more discussion on our part um, if we embark on this process about whether we want to become the climate and energy commission or the climate and resiliency commission or or something or task force whatever that might be um, And again, I'm not a member anymore. My 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 two cents. Yeah, I'm going to go back that this town has way too many committees, and we're tripping over ourselves. Nobody's talking to one another, and I think it needs to be looked on a on a on a, on a larger scale um, with the town saying, okay, here's all these committees we have. A bunch of them should get merged together to limit them. The, the amount of committees we have um, so that we're in better communication with with, with more stuff involved. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, you know, I said and on some other ones and it's they're they're they seem to be handling the topics we should be handling. And but we have no idea what they're doing because somebody brought something to them so that they could get it through there versus another committee. So, you know, I find a little bit of game playing, but I think that may stop now. Um, but I think the town is what, 26 committees or something? I mean, that's just- They're not all, um, they're not all commissions, what's listed on the website. And some of them are inactive. Some of the ones that are listed on the website. Okay. So I, I just, I just think we need to, you know, back where, where none of the commissions or committees, whatever, talking to one another. Um, you know, I think we have too many and they're, they're almost too repetitive. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of there. I, I, I would, I think it would be better to, if we could streamline, um, I, I, with all respect to the town, I think they have so many things on their plate that I think we could be proactive and, and engage them. And Catherine, it would be good if Gina Verano, I guess, or someone like that could advise us on the pros and cons of the different structures. And speaking for myself, but I'm gonna guess for the rest of you, if we got tucked into the conservation and environment committee as a task force or a subcommittee of that group, it, that that would be fine. If, in other words, if we could sort of streamline it, that would, that would be fine with me. So I'm, I'm I, I agree with Steve that, um, you know, there needs to be better communication and people need to be aware of what they're doing. Um, I I think there's too much work and too much specific knowledge that goes into certain issues that a one umbrella committee um, uh, could, could not handle. Uh, specifically, I mean, I would like to see the Conservation and Environment Commission be reimagined around uh, more land-based issues, uh, you know, gardens, open space, education on water conservation, and all those things that, you know, um, the outreach and education to residents, that's that's not happening right now. It's it's a gap that, that has been identified. Um, and I would like to see, you know, right now there's there's no commission focused on waste or materials management at all. You know, we, sometimes we dabble in it because th there's no one else there, but that's gonna be an enormous task. And I think one broad commission is just not gonna have the manpower if commissions are actually in the business of uh, doing work, doing outreach, doing projects like this one is with the Heat Smart campaign. I just, I, and and I, I, I disagree a little bit that there aren't enough people out there to staff them. Um, you know, I think there are interested residents out there who just don't know how to engage um, with the town um, because. 
we don't have places for them or we haven't reached out um, to show them how they can get involved on volunteer projects um, or commissions. So, so a question for the, the new guy stepping in a little bit, just having a little fresh set of eyes here, I guess. Um, when this commission has gone, pa gone back to the town, I'll use the town in quotes, who have you gone back to to talk about issues and the priorities that that you just were going through? The the priorities that we were going through it is actually that those slides come directly out of the West Hartford Energy Plan, which was approved by town council. Right, so but that's a that's a document that was written by this commission. Right. So this. So, but who did who did who did the commission go to? Was it Mary? Was it uh, Sherry Cantor? Was it um, Matt Hart? Was it Dwayne? Who, was there somebody that is the, um, we'll call it you know, the rabbi for these commissions or this this commission? It, would be, um, it used to be the planning and facilities committee, which is chaired by Ben Winograd. It had Mary Fay and so Ben. Yeah. yeah. So Ben is the town councilor that you would tree up to. But is there a town staffer? That you would talk that would be your point person that's that's catherine me part-time town part-time energy specialist for the town of west hartford okay sorry I I'm in, yeah yep. i'm in but i i'm in plant and facilities yep okay now the other commissions that kind of like we overlap with are they going to the same people no and, and this is, I think, part of the problem. Some of those commissions don't have staff members, which renders them a little less effective. Um, for example, conservation and department and environment does not have a regular assigned staff member. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a recycling coordinator. Um, so if we had a waste management, uh, waste reduction and materials management commission. There is a staff person who could work with that commission. Um, but the bicycle pedestrian commission does not have a regular assigned person, um, depending on what issue they are discussing. Sometimes it's a planning staffer. Sometimes it's an engineering department staffer. Or it's um, just Scott Franklin. It's okay. Yeah, but he's not a, st a, a town. I know. I, know. I, know. I was kind of yeah. between the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, with I, so I, you know, coming into this with a commission task force, you know, I'm just going to be independent, you awesome. know, out of the way here and make you let you all make your decision what you want to do there. I want to participate how I can, but I'm just trying to think with Matt Hart leaving, is there an opportunity before he leaves that he could present to to Sherry and the majority party that there needs to be a uh, all encompassing staffer that is in charge of these type of sustainability climate items. I think Steve's point, there's too many commissions. How do you then you look at it? If you got one person overseeing that, then you might have different tasks worse like this to, to address and to your point, community outreach and getting stuff done. So right now there is a sustainability advisory group, which was temporarily formed um, and part of their task um, given is to make recommendations back to the council on sustainability related initiatives. Um, they are partway through their work. They will be presenting to this standing committee, the Plant and Facilities, Public Works and Sustainability Committee. And one of their recommendations, actually several of their recommendations are gonna be around this idea of commission cleanup. Um, and the possibility of hiring a staff person like that more centrally um, to oversee and coordinate this work yeah. I mean, across departments and across commissions. All right. I mean, I, I have an opportunity to see Ben Winograd quite a bit where mm -hmm. I live, and we walk and we cross paths quite a bit, and, I, and a few of the other town councilors. So I'm more than happy to put a bug in their ear on, on this as well. Yeah. But and and those recommendations will be will be coming as well. I think, you know, whether we have the the funding um, or the appetite for adding new staff in that area is is why, um, you know, I'm the staff liaison for the sustainability advisory group as well because there is not that position. Right. I got it. I, I know that uh, the mayor told me that 
a couple of years ago, they hired somebody, I think, or or they put all a, a plan together to realign the commissions to work better than they do today. So, you know, that that basis could be looked at um, to see if that's still feasible. Um, because I think the town already kind of did that work. You know, one of the things I look at this saying, like, okay, anything environmental, you have your main committee or, or you have your main uh, committee, and then in there you have some subcommittees that, you know, one could handle committee on the trash, committee of this, and that way it all stays together before it leaves the committees and everybody talks to one another. Um, you know, I go back to to Ben that I was I was kind of blown away when I was at the town council meeting for the TCI, and he says I have no other I don't know any other way to try and reduce emissions on diesel trucks. Okay, well if you came to any of our meetings, you would have learned about biodiesel ways to do stuff. So that's where I see that there's a whole disjointed part that um, is getting lost in the town. Well, this is a pretty good discussion here. So I, I do think we should get some advice from Gina Verano, and I'm happy to tee that up. Um, Bernie, I, I think Cynthia Letter, I forget her last name, is is uh, is the one that I've been already talking to about commission um, stuff. I mean, I've learned quite a bit about the different formats, but I I think again we should think about what it is we want to look like and do and then let them tell us what fits that i i don't think i think maybe getting it the other way around would would cloud us but so, do, do the other commissions have the same feelings or not or do you, we not know I, we don't know and and i think one of the suggestions of the SAG it, it, along with the commission cleanup. And I think we discussed it in one of these meetings um, was that before they change anything, they should bring all these kind of, as you're talking about related commissions together to discuss what that might look like and whether they want to stay separate and maybe have some kind of quarterly meeting overlay where representatives come together. I, I, I don't know, but, um, or whether, you know, they do want to merge or they do want to stay separate. Um, again, the bike pedestrian commission is this, is in the same boat that we are. Um, they are by resolution and they should be corrected to be by ordinance as well. The conservation and environment commission has not been updated since 1972. This was all um, research that Cynthia and I did together one day sitting in a room. Okay. So what do, what do we think about Bernie? Maybe in, in kind of you know having a, a a joint meeting of just commissioners with all you know the committees that are fairly similar or overlap, and just to have an open discussion with one another. Yeah. That's so, one of the SAG's recommendations because uh, they've been they've been having the same exact discussion that we're having right now. So I'm your I'm your communication link. <laughs> but lucky you, Catherine. So should, should we, Bernie? Should we? that is good. That recommendation is is on the books in their presentation, which in the next few months will be presented to Ben and and Mark and uh, Carol, who are the commission the council members on that committee. Yeah. Do we need to have a vote or something or proposal to say, hey, we need to get together with the other groups and have a whole big joint meeting to see how we can operate better. Yeah, I, two two things. I think I, I think I can articulate what my my view of what we're all about, which is any anything that uses energy, and it can be a car, a bus, a home. It can be the electrical grid. It can be you name it. It, it can be delivered fuel. It can be electric. It can be gas. I, I think we we have a, a role a role to play. We don't have to necessarily drive the bus, but before they build a building, I'd, I'd like to. So anything that involves energy, I would like to be involved, and that's a, that's a big scope. But and then Steve, to you to your point, 
well, Catherine, is is there such a meeting sort of contemplated? I, I think it would be helpful to. It's uh, not on the table yet because the SAG hasn't done their presentation, so they haven't made that recommendation yet. Right. Um, you know, I I talked to Matt Hart about it a while ago um, because he and I had had some regular meetings around sustainability and and. Um, staffing and the climate resolution and various initiatives that he and I were working on together and Catherine Bruns and he and I were meeting for some uh, morning coffees every once in a while as well um, because he's very interested in sustainability um, as well um, so I, I think we the idea has has come up there too but unfortunately you know he's leaving so we'll have to um, we'll have to make it happen after he's gone So I hate to leave all of this without a step. Um, I, I think we could articulate what we view our role as and put that up and say where we want to meet with whatever, as, as soon as possible, as soon as the SAG can get constitute this group and whatever configuration we want to be part of it. It sounds like there's a process that's hard for us to get ahead of and I don't want to cause any more chaos than we, we have now, but uh, Especially since we're we're not even a legitimate commission at this point, I, I do want to kind of get things fixed. Yeah, so I I think Bernie, we could take a vote to say that you'd like to get fixed. <laughs> speak, speak for yourself. <laughs> but you know that we support that whatever form that takes, whether it's just you know correcting ourselves to be by ordinance or looking at something different that that we as a commission would like to initiate that process yeah with corporation council or with town council whatever whatever the next step is um that we're we all want to go there <laughs> as a group <laughs> yes we want to become legally correct i think we want to have a clear sort of mandate and charter and lines of communication so because there are as Stephen has told said a lot of times we stuff falls through the cracks and it's not clear it's very confusing so how do we make that into, uh, let me make a motion then that we put together a, a, a document letting the sag no while letting whoever, Cynthia or Gina, that we wanna fix ourselves as to how we're constituted and that we are, we really believe that we need a clearer articulation of our mission and our role in, in the constellation of commissions that we have in West Hartford. Kind of encompass it. And, we'll, and we, we're, we're putting our hand up and saying, we want to do this. We don't, we yeah. don't wanna, I second the motion that we initiate the process to revise how this commission is formed or whatever. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> I, it's, I, I'm in favor of it, but I think it needs to be broader of all the commissions per se, you know. Oh, good. So we've amended, we initiate the process to revise how this commission is formed subject to looking at it in concert with other similar commissions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Yeah. That have the same goal. You're getting, yeah, getting the sense that we're not. Just, Mark's getting grow, the sense. Grow, grow, yeah. And okay, we just got to realign it. That's all. Yeah. It's just yeah. a very simple get together, realign it, streamline it. You know, it's just a you know a bit of a normal course of business because I think what's happening is you know maybe all these groups are getting too thinned out anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I know okay. that there's frustration on the other on some of the other groups. Yeah, that's what that's what we've heard as well. So, um, 
I don't I don't know whether we need a formal vote, but but I think we've got the you you tell me, Bernie, do we? Or otherwise we've got no, the idea on the book. Yes. Is anybody opposed to this? I mean, Stephen, I think your your amendment was a good one. We want to do this with in conjunction with other other people. With that with that said, and I I think we're going to have to rely on the recording to capture the sense of what we just said. Uh, but is anybody opposed to this, to sort of clarifying ourselves? Does anybody want to continue to operate in the shadows of confusion that we do now? Well, hearing hearing none, I think we'll we'll try to make that happen. I think it's okay. I'll, I'll move on to the, uh, the next couple new business items. Which I think are clear. Um, they're much more focused. So, Catherine, I, I was reading that the school infrastructure plan. I think some of the federal monies are going to ventilation of the schools, which is important, especially our older schools, which don't have good ventilation. Unfortunately, that operates directly contrary to our energy efficiency mantra. Namely, you're taking conditioned air and throwing it out into the cold, or Nice cool air and throwing it out into the warm, and so. Bernie, are, uh, before sorry, before are you referring to the capital projects plan? Capital projects plan, yeah. The long term capital projects plan yeah. for the for that or the town or both. For for the for the town of West Hartford, I, I thought we were, our okay. a good amount of our monies were going to. The American Rescue Plan monies were going to getting ventilation for the schools. Oh, yep. not that I know of, <laughs> unless they've changed yep. it. That's what Bob and I put forward. Um, but um, unless they've changed it since last I knew, um, most of the projects that Bob and I put forward um, were, were not selected. Um, Catherine, what did you do that? Because I know recently because they started spending the 25 for the general uh, allocation, then 10 million for the schools. I was under the impression that they were going to move instead of delaying it like they, the Board of Ed did or the town did um, a year or two ago, that they were going to move that up. That was my impression. Oh, okay. Uh, but I don't know that 100% that they're moving forward because they're starting to spend. You've got to spend the American Rescue Plan money by 2023. Yeah. And you should be able to do it for capital improvements. You can't do it by hiring people and all that stuff. So by updating the ventilation system, new and improved ventilation system, that should be part of that $10 million that was allocated to the schools. Gotcha. Okay. But I don't yes. know if they actually moved it forward. They, the last vote they had was to delay it, but I think there was a lot of upheaval. Your re recommendations, this commission's recommendations, I know politically we put it forth as well that they should be updating some of the ventilation systems in the schools that need it. So. Yeah. Well, the... A lot of those projects have always been on the capital improvement plan, um, but um, and the idea was to accelerate them. But I, I I didn't think they had gone for that. I thought they wanted to keep them where they were. Um, so right, but I think with anything I, with I will COVID, check in. I think, I think COVID. Somebody needs. To, I I'll just have to double check as well. But I think with COVID, yeah. everything going on with COVID, they decided that it wasn't good politics Excellent. to push it out another five years. But maybe it went up with the ten million dollars. So who knows. Could have been Bernie, where did you find this information? Okay, guys, I apologize. I I know I read it somewhere, and I thought the way I read it, I thought it was was, was common knowledge. I, but it sounds like I'm, I'm, it sounds like there's some uncertainty. I I will go back and check with Bob because obviously Bob Palmer will know. Right. Um, check and see if it was up for, if it was added to the list to get done now. Yeah, I I can't out. believe he wouldn't have told me if that was the case. Um, yeah, and and some of these projects were, um, you know, ventilation and at the same time adding air conditioning. Um, I know that some of the facilities folks are of the mind that um, at some point in time we have to start considering that you know we're not going to keep adding on to the existing buildings. Um, some of them need major gut renovations um there are envelope there are things that go way beyond ventilation um so uh that's an idea that that we've been pushing but um but hasn't taken hold quite yet i think at a minimum 
I think Lamont was pushing back on this because he, I think his initial stance was this should be taken care of by the towns. So don't come to me for federal for for state support on this. And I think he's gotten a lot of pushback, and uh, and I and I think he. I think he's changed his mind. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that I just saw that in the Connecticut Mirror today. I well, I mean, I think using it for building improvements, the schools in particular, is a excellent use of the funds. Um, I mean, Bernie, as you know, all the people on the Connecticut Energy Network are are pushing for that too. From you know Kenny Fuscu with his Tools for Schools initiatives in the past and everything. Um, it's it's a huge issue. Um, in the country, you know, and West Hartford's no different. Yeah, uh, the, I just saw Kenny Foscu, who's a CT Energy Network and a health, I think he was a health department employee before he retired. Yeah, I think he, he sent an article around today. And there's a school in Hartford, they call it the school of death, where a teacher will retire at age 60, and then within a few years, they have cancer. And they, yeah, they, I mean, quite frankly, with the state of the schools and the COVID issues on top of it, I, I, I was blown away that West Hartford was not allocating money to this. So if we are, I, I'm, I'm pleased. Yep, I got a, I got a note into Deb Poulin as well. Just check. Okay. And guys, I apologize if I've sent this down a rat hole. Uh, I, I thought I, I should have been more, more careful about remembering my source. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I just asked Bob in the morning. I mean, he'll know 100% for sure. Okay. And the only point I was going to make is if we're going to improve the ventilation, we should get energy recovery um, mechanisms in there. It's just to, for, that, that's the only point I want to make. Yeah. Well, you know, again, Bernie, that I, I just like on new construction, you know, I would hope that. Um, this committee or, or, you know, the opinions of this committee could also influence um, the capital construction process as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, another thing that's um, been around for uh, quite a while, and uh, we revived it, I guess, in anticipation of this meeting, is back in 2016, there was a particularly bad solar installation that resulted in a, uh, I'll, I'll call it a moratorium, although I don't think it's really a moratorium on ground mounted solar in a lot of the neighborhoods in in West Hartford. So this, especially your smaller lots. And I think a year ago, Catherine, we asked the town council to take a peek at this. And so we, Catherine and I met today with Todd DeMay and who in turn, who would ask us? So I, th I think we finally have a head of steam to take a look at this. We developed a little action plan for our March meeting. We hope to come to the commission with a uh, a proposal. And uh, the tack we're taking is, first of all, to make an inventory of what, well, what does ground mounted solar look like? There's a lot more devices and configurations now than there were in 2016. So let's let's actually get images of those and then conceptualize what they would look like in a in a small West Hartford lot and a medium sized West Hartford lot and a big West Hartford lot and see and see see if there's more opportunity for us to put solar around than than we think there is and see if there's stuff that if there's a way we can tweak the regulation so that we don't have crazy stuff going up but we we don't slow things down. What what are they asking us to look at the 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 where it can go or what type of solar installations? It's actually both of those things. It's it's like like for example, you could have over right now, Steve. If no matter what size lot you're on, you could set up a carport over your driveway if you want. You could put some four by fours and take a piece of sheet metal and stick it over there. Um, for all that. that that I think you're allowed to do now. There's no reason that in that context that the, that instead of a piece of sheet metal, it could be a set of solar panels. So where over over the over a driveway is one place. Um, and then what can you put up? 
um, there's when you say ground mounted that covers such a wide range these days it, there's machines that open up in the daytime that's ground mounted there's things that lay flat on the ground that's ground mounted there's things that stick up over a, a, over a rooftop that's ground mounted so we're, we want to narrow down the, the devices the equipment and also marry them up for where it makes sense to put them yeah I think, so i think you really need to look at that um because the rules in connecticut are changing where i think I, I don't know if they've changed now bernie or they're going to be but let's say prior to this you could only put infrastructure that you could use match 100 percent of your usage now you can make money putting in you know more than than your consumption is and sell it out to the grid so i think you're going to see solar fields coming into connecticut um yeah so i think you just need to be leery of you know if you want to you know william debella say hey i want to make some more money and just uh you know turn the entire mdc into a solar field um <laughs> so you know people can you know i know Catherine, you know, our roofs at the, the town building, they're not fully taken up yet, right? Uh, no, no. Uh, we haven't done a lot of roofs because they're too old. We're waiting for the roofs to be replaced before we put solar on. But, but for but, example, but, like at King Phillips School, is, which was the last school we re-roofed, is substantially covered with solar. Okay. Is all of it or just... Well, obviously there are missing patches for shading and mechanical equipment, but the whole thing, yes. Okay. Yeah. That's a, and yeah. town hall is is the whole thing that was available. Yeah. Okay. All right. I didn't know. If I mean, I would think that what, what you could use frontier would be parking lots. Yeah, yeah, carports. So you know, to go back to Bernie's point, so Todd and I kind of we we. And Bernie, we we kind of divided the work. So this group and my group is my task. Where we're like Bernie said to go away and kind of give back to Todd and the planning department examples of uh, installations um, that might be feasible in West Hartford. And again, we're talking about more the residential side because the solar, uh, the commercial lots. And the larger residential lots um, are not are it ground mount is is permitted there. I mean, obviously, subject to whatever the other regulations are. But there, so we we are we were told to go away and and come back with you know what what would some of these installations look like uh, for their part. Planning is just residential, just residential. Mostly concerning residential. Yep. Okay. Um, planning's role is they're going to go and um, look at other towns, similar towns, um, obviously because there are a lot of rural towns out there, um, which do which have larger lot sizes. But he, they're going to go look at similar towns' regulations around solar to see how they compare to ours. Um, what Bernie and I learned today, we're sharing with you, is that in fact what west hartford has on the books is actually a little bit more permissive than we the commission thought it was around ground mount um and specifically um with regard to carport structures um which is i would guess the the primary one of the primary installations you would see in a residential a small residential lot over you know, not back in the woods at the back of the building where it's all shaded, but maybe attached to the house or a freestanding structure in the driveway, more akin to a roof mount. And right now that is permissible. Those are those are allowed. So I think part of this exercise is also clearing clarifying for resident for residents out there what is permissible and what is not permissible. So some of the images and technologies that we come up with and show back to planning, you know, they'll be able to say, yeah, that's allowed now. No, that's not allowed now. You know, should this be allowed? How can we tweak it um, to get it to a point where maybe a little more would be allowed or maybe 
maybe we're good where we are. But I think there would be a lot, a lot more clarity on what is permissible, what's not permissible. And our idea eventually would be to package that with some education, Steve, as you mentioned, about these new seller incentive programs so that people, we could, we could encourage another wave of solar um, in the community. Catherine, I apologize. Do you mind if I just share one quick thing? Go. Yeah. You're in charge. <laughs> That's a scary thought, Kevin. <laughs> well, um, well bring, before, while you're bringing that up, I did hear back from Deb. <clears throat> the ventilation project is starting this summer. Yeah. But instead of being completed within 10 years, it needs to be completed within 15 years. Yeah. That's actually, I. Is this is this and is it Mark, do you know is it being funded by the ARPA money or regular capital improvement money? It's probably a little of both, but right now it's be starting, but it's starting this summer to do the up, updating of the ventilation in some of the schools. And they're identifying that for my note. But to double check with Bob of where they're starting. Yeah, I mean, so those those projects are in the capital improvement plan. I think Duffy is the first one that's on the uh, Duffy's been on the list for three years. <laughs> Can, can you a lot, of these, projects, yeah, a lot probably... of these projects keep getting bumped back when we have emergency projects that need to funding in front of them. So I guess right. this is a commitment that it won't get bumped back because we have leaky roofs and things like that. Yeah. Right. So this, this is exactly what you guys just said. The significant addition of three three million dollars for the first year of a 15 year program to improve air quality at nine of the town's 11 elementary schools that do not currently have building wide fresh air handling and air conditioning system. So that's the thing that I saw that it's in, that's in weha.com. Yeah. Again, uh, I don't know, from my perspective, I still think this is a cheap band-aid fix and we should be embarking on a, a much more substantial, um, you know, renovation plan where we close the school and, uh, you know, rebuild. I think our, a lot of our buildings are, are beyond it. But obviously, that's much more expensive. <laughs> and not well liked, trust me. Yeah, but you know, at some point, these band aids are not cost effective, not energy efficient. And on a life cycle basis, you know, we're doing more harm um, than good. I, I live near KP and I rode my bike around the school and, and, I, and I went to KP. And I have to say that building is a dump and it, it is gross. Um, landscaping wise, whoever's taking care of it, they're not even doing their job. I mean, there's like poison ivy coming out of bushes everywhere, paints falling off the windows. And, and it, it, you know, I went in there and I'm like, well, there's the same stains in the ceilings as when I was here 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I probably put some of them up there. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Steve, yeah. this, this this is being recorded. You don't want to own up to any of those. Yeah, right. yeah. Hey, hey, statute of limitations. It's way past that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I ride around my bike around the school. I'm like, this is just gross, you know. And I'm kind of lucky that all my kids went to uh, Bristow, which is gorgeous. Yeah. Um, yeah. We we need to we need to modernize a lot of the buildings, and that's kind of one of the things that we we would like to see, right? And is how do you modernize some of the buildings we have to make them more energy efficient? We're, we're working on buildings that are 50 to 75 you know years old so i mean you can't can't fix it anymore sometimes it, it becomes the money pit you just gotta demolish it and just rebuild yeah i think that's uh, that's the point, point i think right it's my no, point nobody, yeah. nobody's keeping a watch on the building just doing general daily maintenance guys that we have on the payroll in the town like painting around the windows and making it look pretty like no no, nobody's keeping an eye on anything unless they just don't care about it anymore. So, right. Well, and some of, I mean, Steve, just some of those, some of those maintenance projects, there are environmental reasons why you don't want to touch them as well. <laughs> um, just paint over it, hide it. <laughs> I think Dave had a question or something to comment. Yeah. Um, right now, there's a tremendous push on uh, apartments private money coming in and building apartments everywhere. Now, 
is there any connection between uh, the influx of people that this will uh, uh, cause and uh, the use of existing schools? Uh, are, are we going to jam all of those people into the old schools and exacerbate the problem? Or is that a different kind of group of people? There, I, there's actually in that same article where I saw the ventilation, there's actually a fellow whose name is Andy Murrow. I think he's the assistant superintendent of West Hartford Public Schools. Yeah, and he received a, a recommend. I guess somebody writes prepared by Charles Ward, and they basically are saying uh, that they think K through 12 students are going to go down over time. Um, so 2021, they're 8,787. 8, they think that's going to go down to 8,633. And they have a, a gradually going down to just under 9,000, 8,000. So actually coming down. Um, right, but if you ask Tom and Andy now, I mean, you look at the first first grade, second grade, uh, in first kindergarten, those numbers have increased. So there's kind of a big gap right now between as the schools will have will have less, will have more capacity over the next couple of years, but we're, we're seeing bigger class sizes as first graders and kindergartners coming in, so they're there. But I guess to David's point, um, like last night's project um, that was approved for application, 920 Farmington, that project is gonna be mostly, it looks like they're planning on more um, empty nesters, and then maybe some folks with young kids as they're coming in, um, but younger ages versus, um, you know, real school age kids, when we will call higher elementary, and then stuff that they can do at KP like like Steve did back in the day, but that's their anticipation based on that project. And then there's a couple of other ones that, that look like that as well. One park, I'm not really sure what the dynamics will be for that one and, and what they're looking for for families coming into that one, or again, young urban professional. And the problem is, is the school system is too good. So people will move in, get their kids through school, and then when they're done, move right back out. Right. And so it just over over floods our school system in town. I see too many people as soon as the kids graduate, they're they're out of town. Yeah. Although there's uh, like Mark was saying, I think was a lot of empty nesters come back to town. So well, I mean, so our role and my role as the energy specialist is whatever projects we do end up doing. <laughs> <laughs> Whether they're the ones that I want to do or not, I work in conjunction with our capital project managers, you know, to do just what I do <laughs> to a lot of different departments, kind of lobby um, for them to incorporate energy efficiency and sustainable design into them. So, Bernie, to your point, yes, I, I will do everything in my power to put ERVs in here. Uh, you know, I would love to see these renovations be electric based, not you know, big gas fired um, uh, air handlers on the roof. But again, there's budget and there's constraints, there's footprint constraints, um, a lot of things that we have to work around with these existing buildings. Um, it, so it, we can it, only work with what we're given. Uh, is it? We can keep asking, asking um, for more. Is, is it out of the question if we put some numbers together and said, look, it, you know, if I look at, let's say, KP and Norfolk, they're fairly close to one another. Put everybody in KP for a year or whatever, knock down one of the buildings, build a modernized building and have everybody go into one and knock down the other one. So you go from two to one, but a, but a new building that could be a heck of a lot less to run. Is that something crazy for the- That is something out? we can think about doing. Um, I mean, they did it at Charter Oak. Yep. Right. That Charter Oak was built next to it, right? Uh, correct. But they stayed in, in the school while they were building the other one, I believe. Right. And a lot of our buildings could be done just like that. Charter Oak, though, <laughs> we got 80% re reimbursement for um, because it there were some rebalancing um, within the district, um, some but racial imbalancing because it's a magnet school. Is there um, to look at operational cost and, and, and emissions of what was prior to what is now? Yeah, I mean, so doing that kind of analysis is, is I think, beyond this 
commission um, beyond my expertise. Um, I mean, I, I we we could we could start. Um, we could pull analyses that other people have been done. You know, I, I mean, conceptually, we've without the hard numbers on our own facilities, um, we presented those arguments before, both Bob and me, and I think Matt, town manager, you know, uh, we've, I don't know how far up those arguments have gone, because um, I'm not at the table, but um, but Bob is. Um, yeah, uh, again, I, th I think it's first cost, initial cost versus versus life cycle costing. Um, and that's something um, that has been an issue for a long time, you know, with all municipalities and the mix of capital funding and operational funding. Um, yeah, Catherine, I'll jump in and say, I think for us to sort of reimagine all, our 16 schools being re rebuilt, and I, I think we could probably if that's all we did, we might be able to come up with a pretty good plan. But I do think staying within our boundaries, we can articulate changes in technology. I, 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 that's one of my concerns is I think if you're plant facilities, absent a person like you being on this team, the, the, the thing is, oh, my air handler broke. Let me get the, a new air handler. Oh, my, my boiler broke. Let me get a new boiler. And I, I think we always have to be cognizant of at every at every time we make a capital improvement or a capital placement there are more options on the table than there were when at when at 25 years ago when that piece of machinery was stuck wherever it was and so th there i think we do have a voice is to say before you go down that road you really ought to look at this road and see what's there and you did you did that with charter oak i mean that's a geothermal school it has a solar on it so we we didn't just replicate the past there. I mean, it should be pretty easy to pull the utility bills off the property, right? Oh, I have all the energy, but that's not the only the only no, operating not, cost. It, <laughs> yeah. No, no, absolutely. That's one of the costs, and 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 just the daily running of it too. You know, other other costs of just general maintenance, but yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I have all the utility costs. Uh, that's that's one of my functions as the energy specialist. I track all the energy use. I have it by square foot, by DUIs, number, you know, whatever you want. That's easy. It's, it's getting a little late, but give me one one minute to tell a, a story. Go back to 1918 when I was just a lad. We had the flu epidemic of 1918, which is even worse than the well, the thing we have now. And so when you built a building back then, if you go to New York City and you look at some of the buildings, what they 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 didn't know about viruses then, but they knew that there was good air and there was bad air. And they knew if you had a lot of sick people together, they got sicker. And if, if you were out in the open, you tended to live longer. So their their approach was to open the windows but it got cold when you opened the window. So what they would do is oversize the heating. So instead of 100,000 BTUs, you'd have 200,000 BTUs. And that's, if you think about it, almost a, a little more than a century later, we're at that same crossroads. And and who among us knows what the next, iter maybe, I, look, I, we all hope that Omicron is, is, is it, but, what if five years from now our, our kid it's metamorphosed into something else and our kids are running around with masks I, th I think indoor air quality is something that we want to think about and i think we want to think about it in an efficient way so i i really do think there's a lot of things that we can without stepping outside of our bounds we can put in front of the town council and planning and facilities not and catherine i'm not saying you're not doing that i'm just thinking we can add to the list perhaps well, no, I, I obviously I I could be doing more. <laughs> Otherwise, maybe we would have new. I don't know how much more you can do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. 
we've we've gone on here. So we sort of went through the community priorities. Catherine, you've got a fairly well thought out list of municipal energy priorities for for this year, right? Yes, I mean, and one of those priorities actually is is doing a better job sh sharing um, out information on, on what the utility costs for the buildings are. Um, somehow my plate seems to be full with a lot of other uh, climate resolution and sustainability work, which is not <laughs> within my part time energy job. So some of those uh initiatives that i want to get to um don't always get done um but that that is one of my primary goals too is is um to have more of an established feedback loop on how the buildings are doing energy performance wise because yeah. we have we have some horrific buildings i mean um <clears throat> just to give you a sense uh charter oak is our best performing building and one of the metrics we use to measure energy performance is something called EUI, uh, Energy Use Index, which is KBTUs per square foot. It's electricity and natural gas con combined, converted into one common unit divided by square foot. Charter Oaks EUI um, is in the mid 30s. Uh, we have some other buildings, Whiting Lane, Webster Hill, Bugby, their EUIs are over 100. That's a significant difference. Yeah. And so it's at some point you look at how long do we, who knows what fuel prices are going to be 10 years from now. When do we want to continue to live in a building that's using four times the energy per square foot that we know we we're capable of doing? It does feed into that question of repair or or build new i think is well and to steve's point too i mean the learning environments of those schools i just mentioned is significantly different as well in terms of air quality daylighting um com occupant comfort everything yeah and i think okay Catherine, you've been staff reporting all along, but we've got yeah. two staff reports here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the SAG group and I think last uh, energy update. I think last you spoke about energy costs. They're they're up because because of COVID and increased ventilation. Yeah, but interestingly enough, the budget that I'm submitting is 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 pretty stable. Um, just a slight increase. Um, although you know this this winter. So far has been fairly cold compared to recent winters. So um, we might see a, a increase in energy use um, for this year, but you know, given if, if we have a normal uh, winter next year, I don't anticipate a major increase in energy costs. Yeah. Tonight might and be then I think I the SAG, as I mentioned, is working on their recommendations, which will be presented and covers some of what we were discussing here today. Great. Good. I think we had a pretty good discussion there and I feel better about what we're we're doing. And Stephen, I'm excited at the thought of getting uh and, and Mark of getting more involved with the businesses. I I personally am gonna be committed on the residential side, but if if, the, if we can lead that charge on the other with you guys, that, that will be great. And Nicholas, you, sh you shouldn't have let us know that you are an electrical engineer because uh, <laughs> <laughs> you belong to us now. <laughs> okay, any closing comments? No, hey, thanks for uh, for letting me uh, sneak into your meeting and hopefully I'll be uh, officially a part of it at some point in the near future. Hope we can make something like that happen, Mark. I think you would be a. Thank you. That'd be great. You're welcome. Okay. Buenas noches, everyone. Buenas noches. See you next Meeting time. adjourned. David, you're doing pretty good for.